Yum, yum, yum. Nothing like eating some cake in front of an audience. It's like, you guys can live vicariously through me if you're on a diet. Nice little plain ice cream cake. Cookies and cream slash chocolate chip, I guess. Oh. No, oh yeah, ice cream cake. And the numbers on the Paladin 7 drop. There are 32 current 6 drops available. The expected value is 24.75. Wait, what? How did you just run the numbers? What does 32 point... What does that number mean? Oh, I guess in terms of the numbered card you get. But unfortunately your math is wrong because you didn't account for the four times as likely last card. Oh. Is it delicious and moist? Yes, very moist. Where'd you get the cake from? Did you make it? Got from HEB. And is the Texan chain of choice. For those of you who don't live in Texas, too bad. No HEB for you. Oh. Are you left-handed, or is that the camera? Yeah, the camera is reversed. I think that's pretty standard. You don't bake an ice cream cake. Or do you? I actually don't know. You probably don't. How much was it for the whole cake? $20? That's value. And given the portion that I just cut off, I'd say this is approximately one twelfth of the cake. So, quick mess. This delicious confection of a break. Only under two dollars. Buying in bulk, always a good deal. Can you imagine going to an ice cream store and then paying like, I don't know, you'd have to pay like five bucks for something like this. Oh. <laughs> $20 and you don't have to pay additional money for every buy. Oh, that is too soon. Oh my god. Vicious. The Canadian Wanderer, thanks for seven. Oh. 
The numbers for artifact are low. It's because I haven't switched to artifact yet. Uh, time pending. We can play some artifact in a bit after this review. Accounting for class cards being four times more likely, your expected value is still 24.5. Yes, but it doesn't matter until you rank all the cards. Oh. What you have to do, you have to put up a list, rank all of the six drops. And then you can get a better image of, all right, on average, I'm going to get something along the lines of, I don't know how good Boulder Fist Ogre is on the list of six drops, but I would imagine it's in the top 25 percentile. <clears throat> you can then say, okay, so you're getting something like a 6-7 with Taunt and Divine Shield for 7. What do you guys think? Do you have a guess on how up on the tier list of six drops Boulder Fist Ogre is? Of neutrals and paladin cards? I would guess that it would be in the top 25 percentile. I mean, obviously, when you consider, you know, not not battle cries. Might even be top ten percentile, yeah. Can you discover Sunwalker from it? You can in fact discover Sunwalker from it. Sunwalker will end up in the uh bottom percentile. Average six drop stats are three five? You're kidding me, really? Don't sound like fake news. I refuse to believe that. You can put this up while talk stats on a meeting. Oh. One year ago, the math was done. The average was 4.75 slash 5 stats. Okay. My sets have changed since new cards have been printed and old cards have rotated away. It's okay. I didn't drop it. We're safe. Some of the low stats are still better picks. Yeah, Mechanical Wolf would uh, seem to be a pretty good pick. Well, yeah. And yeah, even a card like Reckless Wagger Tier, which doesn't have great stats. And it's pretty solid. 
I don't know if that would be top 10 percentile. It'd be like Gilnan really good. Ish. We slept on free from Amber. Did we? I don't remember if um Wait, when did we sleep on free from Amber? It was only because of Spital, right? I think my memory only goes back that far. <clears throat> yeah, that's a nine minute card. That's a raid boss. It's actually a world boss. Oh, that's a world boss. I can get the 25 mana card for Paladin now, can't it? Yeah, no P.O.P. Those are the bits, Safi Flam, Burning Demise. Uh, let us talk about the cards officially. Official card review. Cards are... To make the cards... Ugh, what is the term? To make the cards genuine? I remember looking at the opening of the stream, it's like, ah, the card review, now the cards are finally, you know, official. Ah, make the cards official. Confirmed? I don't know. We'll just say, official card review. Authentic.
Always make sure to stretch before doing your card reviews. Okay. Let us get to it. Let's see, as a sugar rush. Come into play yet. Nope, still sloth. Sugar rush is an urban myth. Really, explain. Do you think I just ate a placebo? Has science gone too far? The sugar rushing of placebo. But that's one of the powers in Boku no Hero Academia. Caffeine makes you more awake. Sugar gives you a short burst of what you feel as energy. Sugar usually comes with caffeine, but it's not the sugar. It controls your insulin levels, and insulin levels affect you very much. I feel like I'm getting a placebo into thinking that the sugar didn't do anything for me. You can't fight the real effects of sugar! I feel so powerful right now! Power! Ah! I can take on a zombie army! Like Popeye after eating the spinach. Except if he got more powerful after eating ice cream cake, America would get much fatter. Which is terrible. Just read a biology textbook. Sugar contains glucose, it dissolves fast, and is long-lasting energy. Which means it has a high sugar rush and a low crash. That seems to be what pop culture thinks. So quick, we gotta do this review while we're on the high, yo. Let's see, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. <laughs> Welcome to the first big reveal. 14 new cards coming from the stream as well as from the daily cards that are getting revealed now. So we got a good bunch of cards, some of which have a lot of synergy together, to review. Hello, YouTube. <laughs> yep. 
Yens always tells me, make sure your opening is energetic. So, to some extent, yes, you can tell that it is YouTube, I suppose. You gotta get them in the opening. That's why Crip already always begins with a hyper. Hey, how's it going, Creparium here? Something like that. Now, where was I? But I like to make sure to keep all my openings at least a little bit original. Ah, uh, sorry, now Yems has to walk through this. Okay, let's get to it. You know, sometimes I add these side notes specifically for a heart to heart with Yens in particular. Because I know he's watching this and he's gonna be like, ha ha. Or maybe he just skips the Trump, I don't know. Do you skip the Trump, Yens? Anyways, we can't use any of that because when it comes to card reviews, people just want to go straight to the card. So. Starting with Ironhide Direhorn, Hearthstone's newest 7 7 7 for Druid. Beast Overkill will summon a 5 5 Ironhide Runt because Overkill is pretty new. Quick reminder Overkill activates when you attack and you kill an enemy minion, which means in the space stats you need to hit something with 6 or less health, and then you get a 5 5. Doesn't matter if the Direhorn dies, uh, you still get the 5 5. If the opponent attacks into the dire horn and they have minions die to your dire horn, your overkill does not trigger. So with that all the way, is this closer to War Golem or is this closer to Dr. Boom? So it doesn't do anything until it comes out, so it is literally a 7 mana 7-7. Seven, seven. And in order for it to work, it does need to attack in the minions. And kill them. So how likely is that to happen? There have been no real ramp into like exactly something like this in Hearthstone history before. There's been ramp druid, but they tended to play cards that are individually good or things that did things immediately. We're talking about Lich King and stuff like that. So I think that given the slowness of this card, it is probably closer to Wargolem. Some people have mentioned, hey, the base stats are good at least, but War Golem is never played. In order for a 7 mana card to be like decent, I would argue that the vanilla stats for a 7 mana card should probably be around 8 and 9. And yes, that does make sense since the Lich King is like an 8 mana 8 8, but it has taunt and also draws you a Lich King card. So I think 7 mana vanilla 8 9 isn't too far to look for. So is it worth trading away like these three stats for the overkill ability? And I would argue. No, to some extent. And yes, the card is high threat, so it basically has taunt, but basically having taunt doesn't save you on the turn that they're trying to kill you. And also, could just play a card with better stats for taunt, like Ancient of War is a 5-10 taunt. So, meh, on Direhorn. An interesting mage minion here. 1 mana 1-1, one, one, Daring Fire Eater. Battlecry, your next hero power this turn deals 2 more damage. So given that you're probably going to play this with your hero power, 
maybe a better way to visualize the card is you have to look at all the synergies. So let's look at all the mage cards uh, together. We've got the Spirit from Mage. 2 mana, 0, 3, Spirit of the Dragonhawk. Stealth for 1 turn. Your hero power also targets adjacent minions, which means if you combo it with Daring Fire Eater, you have a 5 mana combo to deal 3 damage to 3 opponent's uh, minions, which are adjacent to each other. That's a lot like Cosmic Anomaly plus Shooting Star, which also, by the way, is 5 mana. Uh, this would be more like the control version of it. So is that good? Well, in order to say that, we really want to look into this big payoff. 7 mana 4-4, four, four, Gen Ally, the Dragon Hook, Battle Cry, if your hero power dealt 8 damage this game, summon Ragnaros the Fire Lord. So Ragnaros was a card that was so strong that it got rotated into the Hall of Fame. Uh, maybe a cross of too st strong as well as very random. But now we have it for 1 less mana, and you get a 4-4 four, four with it. That's insane. Janelai is really going to push Odd Mage because it is odd, and your hero power dealing two means all you have to do is use your hero power four times and then just pretty much play Janelai. Could possibly be done on curve, or maybe a little bit later, and you get a Ragnaros and a 4 4 with it. That's really good. If you have, if you are Frost Lich Jaina already, and you play Janelai, then your Ragnaros is going to immediately deal 8 damage and heal you for 8 also. That's what I call value. On 9 mana, if you have 2 damage left, you can even do Hero Power into Janela if you're the uh, Odd Mage Heal 2 version. Oh yes, wow. So, it's very clear that Mage has a hero power theme to it. We can even look back to Pyromaniac. Pyromaniac is looking a lot better since Odd Mage is looking good. You genuinely do want to use the hero power, which means that uh, Pyromaniac is looking closer to a 3-mana three 3-4 three, draw card. So I do see Odd Mage as being a legitimate force here, which means you probably would unfortunately not play Spirit of the Dragonhawk, but Daring Fire Eater, that's odd. Uh, this would be something like 3 mana deal 4 damage then. And we've yet to see the Loa for Mage, but... I would imagine it has something to do with hero powers, and if it's odd, watch out! Eh, what else should I add, guys? This is the Loa, isn't it? Wait, is this the Loa? Oh, that is the Loa. Oh my god. It didn't quite equate that this was... I'm dumb. <sighs> Where was I? Right. Both mage legendaries have been revealed. What's the other mage legendary? Good thing, like, our mistake will just be edited out. Hex Lord and Malacross. Was that any good? Adds a copy of your starting hand to your hand. Interesting. Hmm.
Okay. <laughs> I look forward to trying out an odd mage deck again. I did that the I did that with the release of Witchwood. Uh, Black Cat looked pretty good after all. Uh, but now with Janali on my side, I think we can make this work. Shaman gets Zentimo. Three mana, one, three. Whenever you target a minion with a spell, it also targets adjacent ones. Been confirmed that Overload does get multiplied by three as a result. Did I say that right? Yes, that's correct. Uh, because when you are casting this spell on adjacent minions, you basically uh, get two more copies of that spell. So quick ideas of what really what huh. So quick cards that are really good with Zentimo would be Zentimo Hex. You get to Hex three potentially. Zentimo uh, plus what is that card? Crap, I forgot. The uh, you know the water spray card. Four mana deal four heal four. Tidal Surge. Zentimo Tidal Surge. Seven mana deal twelve. Heal twelve. You do have the possibility of doing some really disgusting unstable evolution out there. Triple unstable evolution for the price of one. And indeed, if you have Morabi out and you cast Zentimo Avalanche, you get to freeze five minions and deal like 12, 9 damage, and you get five copies of the frozen minions into your hand. Value, value. That one probably won't work, but probably lots of interesting ideas for Zentimo. We'll have to see if the core for a shaman control type deck manages to find itself. And if this card can be alongside Electra, it seems like the two would work well together. Will this card also make it into Shutterwalk? We'll have to see. No mention of any aggro. Guess we'll throw in. No, I'm no, I'm not gonna mention aggro. Like my aggro deck is gonna run three mana one three. Ha <laughs> ha. Then Timo Earth and Might is basically a three five fungal mancer. Okay, fine, I'll mention that. This even has some interesting applications in mid-range decks because you could go Zentimo and then Earthenmite Zentimo by placing Zentimo in the middle. You don't even have to buff Zentimo, but it seems like a good one to buff because it's a pretty powerful card. You would get plus six plus six instead of plus two plus two with your Earthenmite. So it's kind of like a Fungal Mancer, which is a three five instead of a two two. And you have to also play Earthenmite, but who knows, maybe you'll get a few elementals while you're at, at it. Thanks chat. Yeah, we're good with that for now. Next, a new challenger! Paladin, 7 mana. 
Discover a six cost minion, summon it with Taunt and Divine Shield. So it goes through all the neutrals and all the Paladin cards. You get to choose a six cost and it's Taunt and Divine Shield. So it's similar to Sunwalker, except you will, on average, get a bigger Sunwalker. The exact maths I'm going to be doing in a separate probability video, since I think this is a pretty interesting topic and topical while we're at it. It made me think about just what percentile uh, in terms of high quality minions do you get when you discover anything. And as a reminder, when you discover class cards, the Paladin ones, they come up four times as often. So what percentile do you get? And the quick math is you get the 25th percentile, 25th percentile on average, instead of when you discover versus a random one, which is the 50th percentile on average. The quick math on the average six cost right now in standard with quick math is roughly, and I do mean roughly, a 5-5, five five, which means you're roughly getting a 5-5 a five five of Taunt Divine Shield, but you're ignoring all the death rattles and stuff that you can get from Cairn and Mechanical Whelp, and then there's some interesting ones with low stats that could be really good, such as Reckless Rocketeer, where you're getting kind of something that looks like Gilnean Railguard with the Charged Divine Shield Taunt combo and high attack. So, more maths to be done later. Overall, I think this card is probably a bit too weak to be run, but we'll see in the very math intricate uh, new challenger review where I will rank all the six cost minions and then we'll see around what six cost minion you can expect on average to get. Worth mentioning, just because the Paladin Loa is so powerful, uh, this does discount her by 7 mana. So even if this card is just getting a somewhat like average-ish card, it might be good for the 7 mana discount on the Loa. The high rolls on this card, to just quickly give a few, though, are going to be one of these names. The high rolls on this card, though, that quickly give a few would be Cairn and Damage Stegotron. And one Paladin card that'll come up four times as often, Blackguard, has some pretty decent stats as well. Warlock's got a theme to it as well. Discard Warlock is back. Starting with Screech! One mana, discard your lowest cost card. Deal two damage to all minions. So it is very similar to Volcanic Potion and Demon Wrath of Old, both of which cost three mana, so you're getting a two mana discount on it. Now the question is, would you run this in the control type of Warlock? When you already have Defile and you have Hellfire. Hellfire activates your Amethyst Spellstone. So will we see Screech possibly replace the Hellfire Amethyst Spellstone package? Also the Control Warlock of choice right now seems to be even luck. Uh, will Screech be powerful enough to make it so that you don't want to play even luck? Well, we're going to have to see. Will this be the start of a new archetype also? Discard Warlock again. Well, let's take a look at all the discard synergies. Reckless Fluff, 3 mana 2 6 taunt, battle cry, discard your lowest cost card. Uh, this is a much lower value proposition in terms of mana to stat ratio than the previous card of Screech because 2 6 taunt, that's like almost 3 mana ish. 
So you're getting less value for your discard than the other one, where you're having a one mana spell cost roughly three. This is a three mana minion that possibly could cost four without the down drawback, but isn't that insane at three? Because on three, you already have Tar Creeper, and on four, you have Serenite Chain Gang, which is more total combined staff the stats than the Reckless Fluff. So not looking great for Reckless Fluff. It is worth mentioning, though, that this seems to be the new Warlock mechanic for this set. Discard your lowest cost card. That could make Clutch Mother's Avis much better. And in fact, if you can turn the discard of the lowest cost card into an advantage, then Reckless Fluff could indeed be looking really good. We'll have to see if there are more synergies out there. Also, being told that the uh, name for this isn't quite right, it's Reckless Dire Troll, not Reckless Fluff. And here we are at some of the discard synergy of Warlock. The Warlock kind of ended up with two interesting synergies. One is the low end of the spirit uh, is supporting some sort of hand buff theme. Uh, this other four card set that was revealed has to do with discard. So, High Priestess Jacklick is a 4 mana 3 4 legendary taunt lifesteal. Whenever you discard this, add two cards of it to your hand. Now, 4 mana 3 4 of taunt and lifesteal is nearly good enough to be played, uh, if not just good enough to be played. Kind of like Corpse Taker uh, with the taunt lifesteal and the plus one health kind of subbing in for Divine Shield. And Warlocks are the class that likes life stealing the most. This is a enabler for the discard for sure, though will Jekyllick often be the lowest cost card for you to discard? Questionable. I'm also being told that the card is Shriek instead of Screech. Some uh, translations going on here. That brings us to Jack Look. Much like Clutch Mother Zavis, this is an enabler for discards where you actually want to discard her. Turning the negative to a positive. Now the problem with discard warlock is the same problem that we've always had. Is it better than the control deck even lock? Is it better than the zoo deck zoo? Does a discard warlock have a better control plan? Well, and let me say that more succinctly. The problem with discard lock remains the same. Does it have a better control lock than the best warlock control deck in the meta right now, which is even lock. Does it have a better aggressive slash board centric game plan than the best deck right now of that, which is Zoo? And if this go out Warlock doesn't actually serve that purpose, then the cards are just weaker than the current decks, which would mean that it doesn't see play. Given that some of the mechanics of Warlock and the Loa don't really seem to synergize with this stuff, uh, we might be in for yet another rough road. And my dreams of five star. Oh, what is the Warlock quest? Lakari sacrifice. And my dreams of five star Lakari sacrifice will still not be bearing fruit. But we'll see. Ah, and finally, the final very powerful uh, discard synergy card, Guardian of Soul. 6 mana, 6-6, six, six, Battlecry, add 3 random cards you discard this game to your hand. So if you're playing a discard deck, kind of similar to 6 mana, 6-6, six, six, draw 3, which seems really powerful. 
Again, the problem though is, do you want to run these discard cards in order to run this payoff card? And though the payoff is high, I'm not entirely sure. It is worth mentioning you can go infinite with this if you discard a Guardian of Souls previously, and your deck naturally wants to discard High Priestess Jacklick, right? So you could go infinite by playing Guardian of Souls and Jacklick every single turn for the rest of the game, potentially. That's a pretty solid play every single turn of the game. All right, what else do we have to add here, chat? I'm doing a quick sanity check, but I will confirm. Uh, that you probably only draw up to the number of cards you've discarded. Like, I gotta imagine that's the case. Same as Priest Buster. Oh, well, yeah. You do only draw cards up to a maximum of the amount of cards you discarded, so, you know, of course you want to have discovered... So of course you're going to want to have discarded at least three cards before playing Guardian of Souls for optimal value. Whether or not a Warlock deck is going to be getting constructed that has a major discard theme is just going to depend on whether or not it looks like it can have a different angle uh, be in some way better than even luck. Warriors got a interesting card. Three mana, three, two, Smolder Thorn Lancer. Battle cry if you're holding a dragon, destroy a damaged enemy minion. Now that's a mechanic we haven't seen in a while for warrior but they have had previously in black rock mountain this if you're holding a dragon theme so this mechanic came back uh, destroy damaged enemy minion so basically execute which comes with an additional one mana three two and whenever you bundle cards together you need to add 1.5 mana worth of value so execute plus three two is like four mana or like 3.5 mana and you add 1.5 so this card should be roughly five mana worth of value. And indeed, you can see like it's very comparable to... Oh my god, I can't believe I forgot the rogue name for it. How do I forget the... You guys know. Valspine Slayer. And indeed, it does look similar to Valspine Slayer. Valspine Slayer, a card that pushes war uh, rogue quite powerfully itself. Uh, Valspine Slayer actually even more overstated than Smolder Thorn Lancer. But this is a two mana discount on Valspine Slayer, so a really big deal. And I think it's sufficient to say, if there are more cards that benefit Dragon Synergy, then we might actually see Smolder Thorn Lancer get some serious play. My wild prediction is that Lancer will be poor in this set, as there's not enough Dragon Synergy. Uh, just my thoughts on expectations because a lot of the cards for warriors seem to also have things to do with having armor instead of having dragons. So we're just waiting for the dragon set for Smolder Thorn Lancer to get real good. Wild guess, eight and a half months we'll get a dragon themed expansion. I'm a guess monster.
And here we've got some neutral cards. Starting with Gurubashi Chicken, welcome to the new Angry Chicken. One mana, one one, overkill gain, plus five attack. In fact, they made this look just like the Angry Chicken as a cute little throwback. So how do you buff Gurubashi Chicken? Well, you need to buff both its attack so it can overkill as well as the health so it can survive. So you're looking for something like Kings on it, maybe Spike Bridge Steed or something that buffs attack and health. The problem is at that point you are wasting quite a lot of resources onto a 1 mana 1-1. One, one. The Gurubashi Chicken I would expect to have is about as much play as Angry Chicken. Also a little bit weaker than the Angry Chicken because you can usually put on a plus health thing on the Angry Chicken pretty quickly so that it'll survive the Whirlwind effect which will immediately trigger its Enrage. Unlike Overkill where you actually have to attack a minion and still survive. That's pretty tough. You can fetch it with Death Speaker Rexar. You can fetch it with Death Stalker Rexar also, but I expect it to be meh there. Oh no, sugar crash happening. It's okay, only two more cards. Water boy, get your water here, says the water boy. Two mana, two, one, Balakrai, your next hero power this turn costs zero. Throwback to the grand tournament, in fact, the mage theme is kind of inspire focus because it focuses on your hero power. The water boy naturally seems like a fit into mage in particular. What does it look like in mage? Well, it would basically be two mana, two, one, Balakrai, deal one damage. Is that good? No. Indeed, this with any of the hero powers isn't that great. Doesn't refresh the hero power, just makes it cost zero for the turn. One time. So, eh. You could think of it as a zero mana 2-1, but that isn't quite good enough for a card that you have to play in concert with your hero power. And Finally, some lame card. And I'm mana 7-7. Seven, seven. And we end off with a whopper of a card. A real world boss. Undasta. 9 mana 7-7 seven, seven rush. Overkill. Summon a beast from your hand. Also a beast herself. Her? Undasta? Himself? Itself. Doesn't matter. So the first, the first idea people are going to have with Undasta is pretty simple. Just put her into a Death Stalker. <laughs> Just put her into a Death Rattle Hunter slash Recruit Hunter, and then play your Katharina, Get your Undasta. Undasta kills something. Summons the Charge Devil Sword from your hand. Charge Devil Sword can hit a minion on the board or hit face, whichever. This is a very realistic overkill situation. And you can see how powerful Rush and Overkill are combined to each other because it actually is an immediate fast effect then. Instead of other Overkill cards, which 
your opponent could kill before you actually get any benefit from. So yes, certainly really good with Kathrina, really good with recruiting uh, your charged Devil Swords or your Witchwood Grizzlies uh, and getting them into play from your hand without paying the mana cost. Other potentially interesting application is you duplicate the Undasta in your hand with something like Simulacrum, and then you could Undasta, kill something, get another Undasta, kill something, get another Undasta. Undasta, Undasta, by the way, if you get a Charged Devil Sword with Undasta, uh, Charged Devil Sword's text does not apply since the Battle Cry was bypassed, so you can immediately attack face with it. Some people have theorized about putting Undasta into decks with Baku in it because instead of casting the lame 9 mana cost for Baku, you just play Undasta and then you summon Baku. But that seems like a bad idea because, I mean, there's only one target. Might as well just play Baku and just accept it as a weak card. Undasta also has a lot of future synergy of a lot of unrevealed cards and revealed cards. All of the Loas are beasts and usually big cards that appear, so Undasta can kill something and then get your Loa into play, which may or may not be a discount. So yes indeed, what a boss of a card. You could get you could get a 25 mana discount on Travala with Undasta. Wow, value. All right, what else do we want to add on to these cards? Or is that a wrap? On Reddit, it says that the Guardian of Souls is actually called Soul Word. Ah, oh, unlucky. Guardian of Souls. Being told that this card is actually called the Guardian... Uh, being told this card is actually called Soul Warden. Sorry, just fresh in from the presses and, you know, translations. Yeah, and you'll probably have the actual, you know, good cards by then. So those are the big reveals of the week. <clears throat> those are the big reveals from the stream and looking forward to every single day presenting more custom custom hearthstone cards man i'm too used to that one more time so those are cards from the reveal stream as well as the continually releasing oh my god revealing releasing it's just so much so those are the cards from the those are the cards from the stream, and I'm looking forward to the continuous reveal of many cards uh, every single day from here on out. We're just going to see more synergies, more cards, and soon you're going to see my particular card. It's going to be a doozy. There. Oh, we, uh, we kept awake until the end. We did it. Phew. Saved. What an effort. I probably shouldn't start Artifact when I'm uh, sleepy, right? So what would be a good game to play while not mentally all here? Dark Souls.
But you know what? I don't know if you haven't actually seen this a bit, but right now there is a promotion going around that I'm sure a few streamers have been showing. You want to help me out here? Watch a video with me? Seems fun, right? 